Hello, Year 4. I've heard some of you have um, been trying to have a go at the questions that involve adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators, and I've just found that a little bit tricky. First of all, uh, it's fantastic that you're showing such great aspiration and want to have a go at these harder questions. Secondly, don't worry too much about it because this is something you would have uh, encountered towards the end of Year 4, and definitely it's gone over a lot more in Year 5 and Year 6, so you'll spend lots of time learning about this in the future as well. But I wanted to provide a short video for you all because I know how frustrating it can be if you really want to know how to do something um, and you don't have the, the chance in that moment. So I'm going to just go through this. I'm going to go through a few examples so you can see what, what to do. And then on the next couple of pages, a bit later in this video, I'll just go through the answers as well to the questions that you had on your sheet. So say I was going to try and add something like this. I want to add a quarter and three eighths. Now, the problem that I have, if I draw a bar model, so I'm going to represent this. I've got my quarter. So I'm going to split up this shape into four equal parts. I've got shade one of them, one quarter, and then I've got three eighths down here. So I split it up into eight equal parts. Here's my three eighths. Now, the problem that I've got at the moment is that I've got different parts inside my hole, inside my shape that I'm trying to add together. So I can't do it. It'd be a little bit like um, trying to add oranges and apples. If I add two oranges and two apples, well, what do I have? I've got four pieces of fruit. So I've changed the way that I'm talking about the things that I'm adding. And it's the same with fractions. I'm trying to add quarters and eighths. I can't do it because they're not the same. They're like oranges and apples. So I need another way of talking about the answer to this calculation. And with fractions, what that means is we need to try and find a common denominator. We need to try and make the denominators the same. And I know in year four, you've done lots of work on equivalent fractions. So what we can do is we need to turn, we need to find a way to make these shapes be split up into the same number of parts. And I can do that here if I draw a line across the middle. Well, look, now I've got eight parts here and two of them are shaded. So I've shaded in two eighths. So now I can add together two eighths and three eighths. If I shade, add two more eighths here, two eighths add three eighths is five eighths. So that's the answer to this calculation. I've got five eighths in total. Now, that's sort of how it works uh, in terms of using a pictorial method. If we look at it a bit more abstractly, what's actually going on here is I'm turning this quarter into eighths. So I'm saying, what is the equivalent fraction? What is the fraction that is the same as one quarter, but written as eighths? And to do that, I need to times the top and the bottom by the same number. So I times four by two to get to eight. So I need to times the numerator by two as well which gives me two eighths. And look here, when I split up this shape, I turned it from quarters into eighths. One quarter is the same as two eighths. I don't need to change three eighths because it's already got eight as the denominator. So I can add those together and I get five eighths. So let's look at a few more examples. If I've got one third, for instance, and two ninths. Well, I can't do this yet because Three and nine aren't the same. I can't add these parts together. They're not um, equivalent. So I need to find what is the lowest common denominator? What's the smallest number that three and nine both go into? And I can see that that's going to be nine. If I write out my three times table, I get to nine. Nine times table, well, it starts with nine. Three is a factor of nine. So I need to turn one third into the equivalent fraction that has nine as a denominator. So what have I done? Well, I've three times three is nine, so times by three at the top as well. So one third is the same as three ninths, and then I can add the two ninths. So the answer to one third add two ninths is five ninths. How about another example? Um, let's think about this. Uh, let's do one twelfth add, let's say two sixths. So this time again, Denominators aren't the same, can't add them like oranges and apples, can't add them together yet. So I need to make the denominators the same. The lowest common denominator is going to be 12. Six is a factor of 12, 12 is a multiple of six. So one twelfth can stay as it is. 
but I need to turn two sixths into the equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 12. So six times two is 12. So I do the same at the top, two times two is four. So I'm now adding one twelfth, add four twelfths, which is the same as two sixths, gives me five twelfths. And it would be exactly the same if we decided that we were going to um, subtract instead. So if I wanted to subtract, if I say had um, five ninths, subtract one third, again, I need to turn these, make sure my denominators are the same. So what's the lowest common denominator? Well, it's going to be nine, three is a factor of nine. So five ninths can stay as it is. One third is going to become a fraction, the equivalent fraction with nine as a denominator. To get from three to nine of times by three, remember you're always timesing, not adding or subtracting. Do the same at the top. So one third is the same as three ninths. So now I can do five ninths, subtract three ninths, gives me two ninths. Uh, one more example. Um, let's do five tenths, subtract um, one fifth. So again, I'm trying to turn these, uh, make these denominators the same. Five goes into 10, so 10 is going to be my lowest common denominator. So five tenths can stay as it is. One fifth though, I need to find the equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 10. Well, I've times by two here, times by two at the top. So one fifth is the same as two tenths. So now I can do five tenths, subtract two tenths, gives me an answer of three tenths. So if we look at these questions then, these have been set out to help you with the steps. So you can see the five eighths has stayed as it is, but the quarter has been turned into eighths. So to go from four to eight, I've times by two, do the same at the top. So it's now five eighths, add two eighths, add those together, you get seven eighths. Here, the four ninths, so nine is going to be the lowest common denominator. So three to nine, I've times by three, do the same up here, times by three, Three ninths and four ninths, seven ninths. One half and three tenths, well, I'm going to make my denominator 10, so it's an equivalent, um, so the denominators are the same. To get from two to 10, I've times by five, so I need to do one times five as well. Half is the same as five tenths, and three tenths gives me eight tenths. Now this time, seven tenths, I'm going to make my denominator 10 because uh, five and 10 both go into 10. So seven tenths can stay as it is. One fifth though, well I need to times five by two to make 10. So times one by two, seven tenths at two tenths gives me nine tenths. Again, very similar thing here. To get from six to 12, I've times by two times by two at the top, nine subtract two is seven twelfths. This time again, I've got uh, two thirds and five twelfths. Well, three and 12 both go into 12. So that's gonna be my lowest common denominator. To get from three to 12, I've times by four. So I need to do the same at the top. Two times four is eight. So we get eight twelfths, subtract five twelfths is three twelfths. And then here, five and 10, the lowest common denominator is going to be 10. So five times two gives me 10. So you need to do the same up here, get eight tenths, subtract seven tenths is one tenth. And then finally for these questions, again, I can see two goes into eight. So I'm going to make eight my lowest common denominator. Eight, uh, four, two times four is eight, do the same to the numerator. Half is the same as four eighths. So seven eighths, subtract four eighths is three eighths. The last few questions here, again, apply the same principle. It's just that you um, have a little bit less help. So if you look at question nine, I've got one quarter and seven twelfths. Four goes into 12, so I'm going to make my denominators both 12. So let's turn one quarter into 12. I've times by three, so times by three. Three twelfths add seven twelfths is 10 twelfths. Question 10, two fifths add three tenths. Again, I can see five goes into 10. So I'm going to turn two fifths 
into tenths times in by two. Same at the top, so I get four tenths, and three tenths gives me seven tenths. Question 11, I've got one sixth and two thirds. Well, three goes into six, so the lowest common multiple of three and six is six, so I'm going to keep that one sixth as it is. I'm going to turn two thirds into the equivalent fraction uh, uh, with six parts. I've times by two here, it's times by two here. One sixth and four sixths gives me five sixths. Uh, question 12, I'll do over here. Well, four twelfths add a half. I might know a half as uh, twelfths. Well, half of twelve is six, so it's the same as four twelfths add six twelfths, which is ten twelfths. Question 13. Subtraction now, five sixths minus one twelfth. Well, six goes into 12, so I'm going to make 12 my common denominator. So what's the equivalent fraction here? I've times by two, times by two. So 10 twelfths minus one twelfth gives me nine twelfths. Question 14, half minus one sixth. Again, two goes into six. So six is going to be my common denominator. Uh, a half is the same as three sixths. Three is half of six. Minus one sixth is two sixths. Question 15, three quarters minus three eighths. Again, four goes into eight, so eight is going to be my common denominator. So three quarters, what's that going to be is eight. Well, I've times by two to get there. Times by two is this equivalent fraction work that you've done lots of, I know, in year four. So you get three eighths is the answer. And finally, so nine is going to be my um, oops, common denominator because three goes into nine. Well, two thirds is the same as times by three, times by three, six ninths, seven ninths, subtract six ninths is one ninth. So again, don't worry too much if you found that a little bit tricky. Uh, it's something we'll go over a lot more um, when you come back to school. And certainly in year five and year six, this is really built on. And in fact, in secondary school as well. But well done for really trying hard and for wanting to know more and for having your very best go at this.